I met Scott and Fang back about 11 years ago, I guess, when I first came back to Steamboat to snowboard. I'd, I'd been out here skiing years before that, but I came uh, back, wanted to just come back to Steamboat, check out the town and a couple old friends and things. And so I, I met Scott and, and uh, we started snowboarding together. He was my instructor. And uh, then over the years, I just kept coming back and, and having more and more goals and things I wanted to do. And, and Scott was, he seemed to be the person that really helped me uh, achieve some of my snowboarding goals and at least, at least get that direction going. You know, I was just getting going teaching. I've been around for, for a couple of years and the supervisor at the time goes, kind of gives me that, hey, Scott, we got, a, we got an all full week of privates for you. Do you want it? <laughs> And I was like, oh yeah, a week of work, that would be awesome. And they're like, by the way, you're, the guy you're going to be riding with is blind. And I thought they were joking at first. I was like, really? You know, and I was like, I don't, I've, never, I've never worked with a blind person before or anything like that. And then thought about it, and I thought about it, it was like a pretty unique challenge and something cool. And I was like, all right. And, I, and that's when I called Dave, because I wanted to let him know that I wasn't an expert at it or anything at first. And we kind of hit it off on the phone and had the conversation of, look, I've never done this before, but if you want to snowboard, we can do it. Like, I know how to teach people how to snowboard, <laughs> and uh, so we can go give it a go, and that, that's how it started, man. Of course, I, I was learning myself, so I, I'd only been snowboarding for a season uh, when I came up here to Steamboat and met Scott. So uh, just kind of talked to him about what I had done uh, with my other instructor that I, I'd learned from, and uh, and we just kind of went from there and he threw in suggestions and then we just started having fun. And uh, that week he introduced me to what jumps and <laughs> spin off the stuff, spins and we just It was playing. like, how does this feel Dave? Uh, I, I don't know yet. No, we don't like that. Let's not do that again. No. Okay, let's try it a different way. <laughs> yep. It was good. Work, man. I had 2020 when I was very young. Um, I have an optic nerve disease, so my eyes are fine. They might be a little nearsighted, but my eyes are fine. The, the, the message just gets scrambled between my eyes and my brain. So, you know, things kind of come out like dark or black or, or weird. When I was young, I was one of only two in the world that uh, this disease ever goes this far. It's not, you're not supposed to bring blindness on. I learned to snowboard in, in Snowmass. Uh, my first day ever out on the snowboard was a 17-year-old kid took me out on the hill for half a day. We spent more time on our backs than we did on the snowboard and laughed. It was, it was like a beautiful spring day. It was so much fun. I was hooked. I couldn't even get out of bed the next morning. I was so bruised. Obviously, we... Most of our students are sighted and we rely on, on vision and reading the terrain and looking where you're going and all those things and uh, when that's taken away, like you said, you do rely on other things and it was amazing to me just the, the feeling and the kinesthetic and the uh, more, even the sounds or, or awareness, like Dave has unbelievable awareness of, of what's going on around him and to be able, to, once I learned that and I was able to use that in my descriptions and in how I was speaking to him, I, that's when I noticed the biggest click, is when I truly was aware of where, I don't even, like, it's not really a learning style, but just where his sensories, where they, where they work, where they're the strongest and things. And uh, I think that's by the second or third year, would you say, Dave? Yeah. When we started kind of, uh, I recognized that more, and it was easier to describe things and, and do it through relating it to something else or a, a feeling. Um, I don't know. How would you describe that, Dave? I, I think that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, you had to learn how to describe things. Yep. In a way, you know, not. I still totally use my hands visual. all the time. Yeah. When I talk to Dave. He does. <laughs> he does. I am a very much a, a visual quote unquote learner, uh, although I'm, I do a lot of that through my ears. But you know, if he could describe something to me, uh, then you know, if I could get an image in my head of what he's trying to say, then I understand. You know, if he's trying to tell me how to uh, twist my board or you know carve a turn, 
and uh, and uh, he could you know describe it, but uh, you know sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it wouldn't. But maybe he'd show me in the snow. Uh, you know, we used to build like little models of even the mountain, you know how the runs go and, and the, the roads, and so I would know like when we go down this run and go up this chairlift, then we're on this you know face of the mountain, this side of the mountain. And uh, so a lot of it was feel and, and audio uh, learning. Dave shocks me every day when he rides just because of the level of uh, confidence he has in me and uh, the commitment that he will do what I say and, and uh, trust me and that's very surprising to me. <laughs> but it's great because it works. Oh, just being able to do some of these things that I really wanted and you know, wanted to try to do that you hear on TV, you know, the, getting to ride the half pipe, you know, it's, and getting to do a border cross. And I love border cross. And some of that, you know, I, I never dreamed I'd ever really get to do a lot of that stuff. And uh, I was, when I, the instructor I worked with over in Snowmass, he's an awesome rider and a good friend, uh, we mainly just rode. And I came and, and met Scott, and Scott started mixing it up. You know, he would build like little jumps for me. You know, and he would, you know, we'd find little powder stashes. And he was always seeing different things to do. You know, like, well, let's do a spin here. You know, let's, let's ollie this. And, you know, and that, that's what makes snowboarding fun to me. It's just, you know, just That's what makes just, snowboarding fun, period. Yeah. Not to you. <laughs> just being able to mix it up, not just being able to go ride the Gandhi and then you go down the run, you get on trail lift, and you go back. To me, what Dave does is an enormous challenge and anything I can chip away, just one run down, you know, doing that is, is, is an, to me is amazing. Some of the shifts in my teaching uh, with working with Dave, definitely a lot more hands-on. You get a timid person and you do a lot more hands-on. Dave's not a timid person, but I still do the hands-on, but the hands-on is for a very different reason. With the timid person, it's more of a... I'm not going to let you fall, I'm your safety net thing. And with Dave, it's more of a, hey, don't go over there, I need you to come over here. And, uh, and just uh, more of just like, a, like a, a true guiding, you know, creating and making the safest situation out of what's in front of us. So similar actions, but for different reasons. Um, and I'm finding myself doing a lot of those uh, with the time that I spend with Dave. Uh, we're in uh, Steamboat Springs. This is uh, the Skate Church. Um, they have been great to us, letting us come in here in the winter and actually in the summer we had a few rainy days and we, we practiced in here. We were snowboarding and we were just talking about goals and things that we wanted to do and, and one of David's goals that he mentioned to me was that he wanted to to learn to skateboard or do more skateboarding. So, uh, summertime rolled around, we exchanged a few emails and got together and, and started skating. Started just um, like standing on the board, just looking, talking about the board, the different dimensions, nose, tail, and then just standing on it and then to just start gliding a little, moving, standing on it, and get that feeling going. And uh, then start doing a little, you know, pumping of ramps and things like that. The biggest difference probably is skateboard. You're not strapped onto the skateboard, <laughs> so <laughs> so anything you do, you, uh, you know, you're not attached. So. Snowboarding, you fall over. Skateboarding, fall, you fall off. Fall off or jump <laughs> off. You yeah. learn to jump very well. 